It is now with immense pleasure that I introduce to you the gentleman who will give today's commencement address. For those of us of a certain generation, we grew up watching him on TV. From he and his neighbors, we learned life lessons, including the importance of being curious, welcoming others, and being ready for new experiences. I am sure the class of 2023 experienced some of those same lessons over the past few years. Mr. David Newell is an American television actor who began his career at the Pittsburgh Playhouse. Through the connections he made at the theater, he met Fred Rogers. Mr. Newell's working relationship with Fred Rogers began when he served as a public relations manager for the television show. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, oh, for the television show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. In addition to his PR role, Mr. Newell was also asked to make some speedy deliveries in that special neighborhood. I am pleased he is with us here today to make an incredibly special delivery to our incredibly special graduates and their guests. Please welcome to the podium to deliver our spring 2023 commencement address, Mr. David Newell. Hello everybody and speedy delivery. <laughs> My name is David Newell and, and thank you doctor for that wonderful introduction. I thought I would uh, write some thoughts down and uh, I'm honored to be invited to speak here today. Now I'm not going to make this long, I promise you. It'll be very speedy. But uh, I just wanted to First of all, if you're not familiar with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, it's a program that is on public television, and it's designed primarily for preschoolers and early elementary. And uh, since the f program first aired back in 1968, that's when I started. And I thought I had a job for one year, and here I am 50-some years later, speaking to all of you and I'm delighted to be here on your graduation day. Well, oh by the way, Mr. Rogers' middle name is McFeely. His real name is Fred McFeely Rogers and that's where the name came from. He, he writes his own scripts and he called the delivery man Mr. McFeely. So here I am, Mr. McFeely, speedy delivery. Well. Uh, the program is in production for about 35 years, and now it's in reruns, but it's on the new medium now. You can get it online, so his legacy is continuing. You go on to pbskids.org on the computer, and that's where you can see Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And some of you who may have grown up with it, you can watch the ones you watched when you were smaller, and if not, Daniel Tiger neighborhood is the successor. So, you know, that was a quick overview and traditionally commencement remarks have a message and I thought, well, now what message do I want to give to all of you? And I'm not equipped to talk about uh, economics or politics or give financial advice. After all, I talk with puppets and play with a little red trolley. <laughs> but wait a minute. Those puppets and trolley, along with a cast of actors and musicians, help Fred Rogers, via television, explore universal topics that are of concern to millions of children and their families in the United States and beyond. And I loved being part of that program and of that legacy. And the legacy continues because Daniel Tiger's neighborhood and some Mr. Rogers' neighborhood are shown around the world. All that coming from Pittsburgh. That's where the legacy started. Well, oh, well that's it. That's my message. Uh, did you ever hear the saying, uh, and I wrote it down here, when you choose a career or your life's work, be sure you choose something you love because you will never work a day in your life. I'm sure you've heard that. Well, I've never worked a day in my life and I'm, I'm so happy to have had a life's work that I loved. I love being part of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Now that's not to say 
It was an easy job. It wasn't. Making television programs takes hours of pre-production and research, and the actual taping of the program doesn't always go the way you want. And here, I'll give you an example. For instance, one of the scripts called for an animal keeper from the zoo to bring a chimpanzee so Mr. Rogers could introduce children to various animals. They brought it to the studio. Seeing animals uh, being well cared for helped teach children respect for animals. That was his purpose. Well, all went well during a rehearsal. The chimpanzee was the perfect guest. <laughs> the keeper brought some food so Mr. Rogers could feed the chimp. And that process went well. The director said, well, okay, it's about time we should start taping. Let's tape a segment. Uh, and they said, everybody ready? Uh, well, a camera's set. Uh, uh, oh, chimp is all set. Uh, and Mr. Rogers, do you have enough food to feed the chimp? Well, everything should be okay. And the last thing to do before the taping was to turn on the lights. We were working in rehearsal lights, but when you turn television studio lights on, they're very bright, even brighter than we, we have here today. Well, those bright lights somehow freaked the chimp out. <laughs> and he, he, he turned into a flying chimp. Uh, the rehearsal lights were low, but the bright lights, I guess they scared him. But he swung from light pole to light pole, and he pulled up the artificial grass, and, and he, oh, he tried to eat the leaves on the uh, plastic trees of the scenery, and it was the only segment we couldn't use in all the years that we produced Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> but we learned a lesson. We later lo located some videos showing chimps in their natural habitat in the wild. And that, we decided, was the best way to show children. And that's a good lesson to see those chimps in their natural habitat. Well, about eight years later, we were in Los Angeles taping some segments for the program. And after the taping was over, the crew returned to Pittsburgh. But I decided, I think I'll stay in Los Angeles uh, for a while. And, you know, there may be a possibility of openings in other programs or other studios. I'll just test the water. So I decided to stay for a few days. And after a few interviews, I thought, what am I doing? I love my job. I'm getting on the next plane, and then I flew back to Pittsburgh. Well, I suppose that return was meant to be because months later, a new person joined our staff. Her name was Nan. I'm so glad that uh, my love for my work brought me back to Pittsburgh because I would never have met Nan. She helped me with many McFeely appearances, and she even wore, on many occasions, the purple panda costume. When I'd go out on appearances, I'd take the purple panda with me, and she was brave enough to wear the purple panda costume. That's a chore in itself. It gets very hot in that costume. Well, a couple of years later, we were married, and we now have three children, Carrie, Taylor and Alex, and by the way, all of our children have also worn the purple panda costume. I bring them all in. In a way, you could say that uh, we helped increase the audience for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Well, it will soon be time for your diplomas, and I just wanted to say a few things, but before that happens, my wish and message for you is that you not only love your career and that you don't work a day in your life, now you know what I mean with that, but you also love your life. Now please help me commemorate your graduations by saying two words, and you probably know what they are, they're speedy delivery. And when you say them, I wish you well in your life ahead that's what speedy delivery in this case will mean. 
So, here we go. I'm going to count to three, and everybody can join in and say speedy delivery, but it's really meant for the graduates. I wish you well in your life ahead, and I hope you never work a day in your life. Now, you know what I meant about that, that you love what you do. And that's why I think I'm here today, is because I just want to tell you how much I loved being part of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and how much good I felt we did with that program. It, the countless letters we've received over the, over the many years reflect that. And it makes me feel so good and so proud, and I hope for you that you could find an equivalent in your life that you love going to work every day. I always look forward to Monday going to work. And that is something that I felt I've achieved. If you love going to work, you've really found something that you love. So now, I, want, I told you I'd be speedy, and I thank you all for inviting me here to speak and to assure you that you, let's see, what's the, will never work a day in your life. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to count to three, and everybody, I hope, will call out speedy delivery, and those two words will mean, especially for the graduates, we wish you well. So here we go. One two, three. Very loudly, speedy delivery. One more time, and louder so they can hear you at the main campus. Here we go. One, two, three. Speedy delivery. Speedy delivery, and thank you, and have a wonderful life. Speedy delivery. <laughs>